Hey, Dr. Joe here. Today I'd like to discuss some concepts surrounding autoimmunity. And uh, it's amazing to me, one out of six Americans have autoimmunity, one out of six, which is a condition where their own immune system, which is designed to attack viruses or bacteria, keep us healthy, right? Um, when that system attacks healthy tissue inside their body. And so they end up with all these uh, different symptoms like fatigue, joint pain, insomnia, depression, diarrhea, constipation, weight gain, skin changes, um, inability to heal, uh, you know, depending upon what tissue involves. So we're going to get into some of the specifics of the tissues today. We're going to get into the specifics of what actually autoimmunity is, in, you know, kind of in a basic way, and some of the different factors that drive it. Anyway, I'll introduce those concepts, and in subsequent videos, we're going to dive into further detail about how to actually clinically evaluate these systems and talk a little bit about what's out there that maybe you're not aware of that could really make a big difference for your quality of life if you're one of the one in six people suffering from this. Now, if you want to learn more about this, there's an amazing book, um, some light reading. <laughs> food associated autoimmunities uh, when food breaks your immune system now this is written by dr vijdani and dr vijdani father son tandem and um, aristo in particular has been integral in my growth as a practitioner and that book is amazing and of course that book is very focused on food and uh, but the reality is is um, the title would suggest that but really it's it talks really eloquently in, in basic terms about the immune system, what's going on. There's a lot of great diagrams. There's full of research that validates their claims. And um, it's more than just food. And so we're going to introduce some concepts of what's causing autoimmunity. And then subsequent videos, I'm going to dive into further detail. So if we were to describe this a little bit further, Just get this connected to my notepad here. Here we go. So autoimmunity, right? You have a white blood cell. Now we have red blood cells that deliver oxygen, right? And we're low in red blood cells. We have anemia. White blood cells, their job. This guy is out hunting, okay? And let's say here's a little virus. Here's a bacteria. Uh, here's a little yeast. Okay, and so this guy, right, he's on the hunt. There's different types of white blood cells, but literally he wants to go kill these guys, right? Well, what happens when this guy gets hijacked to kill healthy human tissue? That's what autoimmunity is, okay? So if it attacks the brain, we're looking at like MS. We're looking at Parkinson's. There's autoimmune mechanisms of Parkinson's. We're looking at depression. We're looking at uh, anxiety. We're looking at things like movement disorders, like tics. Um, PANDAS, so pediatric acquired neuropsychiatric, neuropsychiatric disorder associated with strep. Um, PITANS, which is uh, Pediatric infection triggered associated neuropsychiatric syndrome. Okay. And, and so basically, these white blood cells start attacking brain tissue. Kind of freaky, huh? Now, say you attack uh, joint tissue. A little humorous there. Okay. You get RA from that, rheumatoid arthritis. You can get uh, just joint pain in general. You can get uh, juvenile. Uh, rheumatoid arthritis from that. Okay, what if it attacks the heart? Okay, you can get congestive heart failure from that. You can get um, chest pain from that. You can get edema. Now I'm getting into more uh, conditions in the body, not necessarily diagnoses. What if it attacks uh, the thyroid gland? Really great thyroid drawing. Hashimoto's, that's what that's called. Okay, and then did you know that 14% of people in the US have antibodies, which means their immune system is targeting their healthy thyroid gland? 14%. Okay, 
Hashimoto's Graves is a more severe version of that. Graves disease. What about uh, the large intestine? This is my drawing for the large intestine right here. I know, huh? Okay, that's uh, Crohn's. Okay, and then it could have ulcerative colitis. Okay, and what about the small intestine? What do you think a small intestine should look like? How about, uh, we'll just draw a little small intestine here. There's your, there's your small intestine, okay? What does that look like autoimmune-wise? We'll call that celiac, celiac disease, okay? And then what if the autoimmunity is affecting the stomach? Okay, this could be uh, gastritis. This could be also pernicious anemia. So really, whatever, whatever uh, organ system is being affected primarily by the actual uh, attack will determine what the symptoms are. So if it's like the brain and MS, you're gonna get numbness, tingling, weakness in the body. If it's um, Parkinson's, then you might get like rigidity in the body, stiffness, uh, loss of sense of smell, shoulder stiffness, constipation, things like that. Um, obviously depression and anxiety are pretty well speak for themselves. Um, a lot of people that don't respond to therapy or respond to medications have autoimmunity that's unmitigated that's attacking their brain and that's to cause their depression. Um, interestingly enough, a big cause of brain autoimmunity is celiac disease three out of four people with celiac disease don't have autoimmunity that impacts their small intestine actually influences their brain. So that's a, that's a big piece of data there. Ticks. So that's like cracking your knuckles or like when you see some kids that have Tourette syndrome, their face will twitch. Okay. Or they'll blink or do stuff like that. If you find that when you're nervous, uh, you're like a dog and they, they yawn, you find yourself yawning a lot when you're nervous or cracking your knuckles, tapping your leg. Those are ticks. Obviously not all of these are autoimmune, but one cause of these is autoimmunity. Pandas is uh, when a child uh, gets strep throat and then they start acting very, very uncharacteristically, literally in the middle of the night will start screaming and their life is never the same. Um, and the pitans is, is uh, again, children that have radical changes in their behavior that are um, associated with an infection that isn't necessarily strep. Those are just examples of brain autoimmunity. Um, rheumatoid arthritis kind of speaks for itself. Now, Dr. Vijdani actually wrote his book because, I didn't write the book because of it, but pursued his field because his mother had rheumatoid arthritis. Now, you know, rheumatoid arthritis, when you start getting like bony deformity, that's about 75% tissue destruction. So one of the big weaknesses in autoimmunity in the medical model right now, and that's really tough for folks, is that um, basically, in order to get diagnosed and treated for autoimmune disease, you need about 75% tissue destruction. This is very classic. So like I work with clients all the time that bring in their MRIs and the doctors are like, well, you have numbness and tingling and weakness that's associated with things like MS. But when we look at your brain, there is evidence of dysfunction in the part of the brain our inflammation in the part of the brain that's causing your symptoms. However, it's not significant enough that we can make the diagnosis. And what this would be like would be like um, if the fire department was called to your house because you have uh, heat in your room and smoke and the smoke detector is going off and the fire department's called and they show up and they're like, yeah, you definitely have all of the makings of fire here. However, since your building is still intact, like only 10% of it's been destroyed, we can't really do anything. We're just gonna have to wait until enough of it's destroyed that we actually could you know, call the full fire department in and then put the fire out. That is uh, a pretty tough situation for a lot of folks to deal with who know something isn't right and not sure what to do. So, and this is no uh, condemnation of the, the standard medical model. For people that have 75% tissue destruction and they actually qualify for care, getting on the right medication can be a huge 
win for their quality of life. However, between 0% tissue dysfunction and like 75%, people can really, 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 really suffer. And the cool thing is there's a ton a person can do with lifestyle and food changes and exercise changes and sleep changes and modulating stress responses and herbs and vitamins that actually can influence your quality of life in the interim. So just want to throw that out there and we're definitely going to get into that later on. Um, so if we start looking at um, a little bit more specifics here, I, I'm not going to spend too much time on each one of these tissues other than to introduce this concept. So imagine like this one cell, okay, we'll call it a, a TH17, is carrying out these different attacks. TH17 is just a type or designation of white blood cell that actually carries out the autoimmune attack. Well, how does it end up in the area? Another cell will release chemicals called antibodies. And these antibodies, they bind to that tissue, whatever the tissue is. So wherever there's an X, now that 17 is gonna go carry out that problem. So here's the deal. One out of six people in the US have a condition so advanced that they actually are diagnosed with autoimmunity. All right, a substantially larger number of that population has antibody production and tissue attack to all these different tissues, but they don't qualify for the diagnosis of autoimmunity, but their quality of life just sucks, okay? Things like stress compound this, things like uh, overtraining or um, lack of training, lack of fitness compound this. So a lot of people right now are kind of stuck at home and either they're not training enough or they're overtraining or they're really stressed out. And so their autoimmunity, their depression's getting much worse, their digestive system's getting much worse, they're more constipated, they have looser stool, their energy levels are, they're way more fatigued, they're gaining much more weight more quickly, their joints are hurting more, they're getting more chest pain. They might be chalking it up to stress, and maybe it is just stress, but if you have these antibodies, it's getting worse. So what ends up happening is, it kind of makes sense, right? Well. Dr. Joe, what's the best intervention for autoimmunity at this point? Well, let me ask you this. What if you had a thousand of these guys that have grown, okay, to make antibodies, okay, 1,000, okay? Then your intervention might be one thing. Okay, what if you have 20 million Uh, types of B cells, okay, that are making antibodies. Can you see how like that is a much more severe situation? And what might work for somebody with a thousand families won't work uh, the same for somebody that has 20 million. Just, it just, there's, there's no way that you can account for that um, and just give like one person the same dose of the same thing and then expect the same result. Okay. The other thing is there's another type of white blood cell that actually stops this guy and stops this guy. And so some people will have 20 million guys that make antibodies over here that tag these tissues and 15 million guys that carry out the assault. Okay. But then they also have 50 million of these guys to keep them all in check. Those are called Treg cells. Okay, so part of our job is, is, as a clinician is to try to put these different factors on a map, all right? And so I just want to share that with you. So what I want to do next is just introduce some of the environmental factors that contribute to the onset of antibody production, which is the making of these little target, uh, targets that tag the tissue that make the 17 cells go after them, all right? And so if we do that, we know that people can have uh, genetic predispositions. Okay, they can have environmental toxicity. So we'll just say toxins. Okay, they can have food issues. And then they can have infections 
that's really gonna be a really, really awesome circle there. Infections. And basically what you end up with in the middle here is a very strong overlap of autoimmunity. And I'm saying autoimmunity, not autoimmune disease, but because in the literature, these antibodies that we talked about, okay, that, that tag the tissue for destruction, it's kind of like when um, you see those trees that have an X on them and then a guy comes by with a chainsaw and cuts it down, or if you live in an industrial area where they have like uh, people that like spray paint the, the road and then a guy comes by with a jackhammer and breaks it up, think of the spray paint as being the antibody and think of the jackhammer as the other th17 cell that carries out the attack now what i'm going to do in subsequent videos is dive into some of these genetic food toxin infectious disease issues and how they contribute to different types of autoimmunity how we actually can track these things with history with exam and diagnose them with different types of laboratory testing and then What's, what are some of the interventions available to you uh, lifestyle-wise and supplement herb-wise that are just kind of out there that can help start to modulate this system so that you can have a better quality of life. So anyway, that's what we're going to get into in subsequent videos. And I uh, hope you enjoyed this and looking forward to the next one. Have a great day.